The MyTech Brooklyn now has a version with integrated network bridge that renders from both DNLA and RUN sources. It is in fact a MyTech Brooklyn DAC Plus with integrated network bridge, hence the app name Brooklyn Bridge. The versatility of the Brooklyn Bridge is such that you initially might be overwhelmed by the possibilities. But if you look at it structurally, it isn't that complex. Let's start with connecting it to a power amplifier. You could of course also use an integrated amplifier and bypass the volume control on the Brooklyn Bridge. The network connection on the bridge is connected to your home network by a network cable or Wi-Fi. You can store music on a NAS or on a shared volume on your computer. The NAS or computer has to run a DNLA server program. I use Minim server on a Synology NAS. You then can select the music to play using a tablet or smartphone that runs DNLA control software. I use Glider but there are also free apps. The Brooklyn Bridge further has a stereo analog input that can be switched between line level and pick up with either MM or MC cartridge. If you like, you can connect digital sources like the digital output of a CD player, the optical output of your TV and for instance a game console. If you have active speakers, there is no need for an amplifier, you connect them directly to the bridge. If you want to use Rune, you need a computer to run the Rune server program on. The music can be stored on the same computer or on a NAS. The Brooklyn Bridge uses the same housing as the Brooklyn and is available in black and silver. It measures 218 by 206 by 44 mm and weighs 1.6 kilos. There are two 6.3 mm headphone jacks, one in absolute polarity and one in reverse polarity. If you have a balanced headphone, you use both over an adapter cable. The OLED display has two channel metering for peak and average levels with on the right numerical representations thereof. Below that the resolution, sampling rate, MQA indication and indication of the active output, headphones, line or both. The lowest line on the display gives you four menu options at one time. Using the rotary encoder other menu options appear. The two buttons on each side of the display correspond with the four menu options. Pressing the most left button changes the left option, here the input that is set to network and so on. The rotary encoder becomes the volume control when not used for some time. It's all about the same as on the Brooklyn DAC+. Plus. The rear differs clearly from the Brooklyn DAC+, Plus since the input options differ. On the right the IEC mains input with on the left of it a 12V DC input for if you want a higher quality external power supply. The internal power supply is a decent switch mode type and if you really want better sound by using an external power supply, select an audiophile grade one that is capable of delivering at least 5 amps, like the Syntex Extreme Performance Linear Power Supply I use. Then there is the Wi-Fi antenna a trigger connector, the USB-B connector for connecting to a computer, two SPDIF inputs, a USB-A connector for storage media, the network connector, the TOSLINK input, the stereo analog input that can be switched from line to MM or MC phono, the ground terminal for the turntable, the single ended outputs and the balanced outputs. All digital inputs, including the bridge function but excluding USB, can handle signals up to 24 bit 192 kHz and DSD 64 over DOP. The USB input can do PCM up to 32 bit 384 kHz and DSD up to DSD 256. It has been developed to have very low latency and special ACO and Wasabi Windows drivers are provided. Mac and Linux computers need no drivers. All inputs can handle MQA. When a DNA or Rune signal is sent to the Brooklyn Bridge, it automatically switches to that input while the volume can be controlled from the DNA and Rune software. 
that's handy since selecting the inputs using the remote control requires you to read the display menu and that's hard at a distance of more than a meter or so. There are many menu settings. For instance, you can choose between digital and analog volume control, polarity inverse, incorrectly named phase inverse, a home theatre function that passes on the analog input to the analog output, display brightness, logo color and brightness, display auto off and all kinds of reconstruction filters. If you choose to have MQA detection on, you can only select the MQA reconstruction filter which to me is the optimal choice. Compared to the Brooklyn DAC Plus, the professional standard interfaces are left out, so there is no ADAT, no SDIF and no AES EBU. And that's no loss unless you have ties with the professional audio industry. Don't think that a professional interface per definition is better. AES EBU is pretty equal to SPDIF with the exception of the voltage and the impedance and some for sound quality in unimportant status bits. Only for long leads this might be of importance. ADAT is even inferior to SPDIF but it can do 8 channels over a Toslink connection. As you might know I use the initial Brooklyn DAC and have not reviewed the newer Brooklyn DAC Plus. According to my tech, the Brooklyn Bridge uses the same electronics as the DAC Plus but with the added bridge electronics. So it is more or less a review of the DAC Plus 2. And while measuring it struck me that most measurements were dB's better than those of the original Brooklyn DAC. I will show you one. Linearity. It shows how accurate the output level is. If there is a digital signal of minus 40 dB full scale, there should be an analog signal at minus 40 dB below the maximum output, which for all Brooklyns is 4.88 volts. If we look up the minus 40 dB point on the horizontal scale and the vertical scale, their lines should meet. The yellow line shows the measured values and they meet perfectly. We can do the same at minus 90 dB and again it's perfect. The red line shows the deviation from the optimum at all levels. Down to minus 115 dBs there is no deviation at all. Only below that there is a minute deviation at minus 124 dB. The red line uses the right scale, so let's see the deviation in dBs. Only plus 0.8 dB. Since it is an upsampling DAC, it uses the ESS Sabre ES9028 chipset, this means that an extremely precise clock is present and the circuit board is very well designed. Still the difference in sound quality with the original Brooklyn DAC, both used over USB for fair comparison, is rather small. The Brooklyn Bridge is just somewhat more refined on voices and brass and sounds even a tad more relaxed. But the differences are small. Like James Brown's band, I will take you to the bridge. For the question is, of course, what sounds better, the internal bridge or the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo connected to the USB input? To be frank, I can't say. There are small differences, like better sibilance control for the SOTM and more fluent voices on the bridge but it took me quite some time to discover them and I needed listening with the external syntax power supply. Since I am a highly trained listener, you might wonder if these small differences are relevant, especially since I can't call out a winner. The syntax power supply does make a clear difference, so if you are in the market for a Brooklyn DAC Plus and SMS200 Ultra Neo or Brooklyn Bridge, I would go for the last one with extremely high quality power supply like the Syntax. Both options sum up to about the same money. MyTech keeps developing products that not only sound very good in its price class but can also be upgraded by using a high quality power supply as British bands like Name and Cyrus also do. For some the Quite good phono input might be interesting too, my son uses the Brooklyn DAC Plus as a preamp and has his turntable hooked up. It sounds great. 
the addition of a very good bridge function that supports both DLA and Rune for 800 euros over the price of the Brooklyn DAC Plus is a steal unless you do need those professional interfaces. And who does? As always I challenge other manufacturers to prove their product to be even better. They don't have to advertise, just lend me their product and arrange transport in both directions. Next week there will be another review, as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially, it keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.